Now this subject that I'm going to go into is called the kingdom of heaven. Now I chose this subject, the kingdom of heaven, to go into because a brother posed a question to me about the kingdom of heaven and he asked me could I do a video breaking down the kingdom of heaven. Now in this subject, um, I'm going to explain to everyone out there in the listening audience what the kingdom of heaven is and who the kingdom of heaven is promised to. Now this might be like about an hour video, so I want everybody out there in the listening audience to stay attentive and listen to everything that I'm going to go into because this is going to be about an hour video. Um, I have a lot of scriptures that uh, I want to bring out in bringing, and uh, breaking down this subject. So I really want you all to stay attentive and to listen to everything that I'm, that I'm going to go into. And I'll try my best to get through this subject as quickly as I possibly can. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to pull out your Bibles and follow along with me. Um, take a pen and a pad and write these scriptures down as we go along. And um, the first scripture I'm going to go to is in the book of Deuteronomy. Now, in order to make this all make sense to you, I have to go back to the Old Testament. Now, I'm going to be jumping back and forth from the Old Testament to the New Testament so that you can get a thorough understanding of what I'm trying to explain to you. Now, the first scripture we're going to go to is the book of Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto him ye shall hearken now Moses is telling the children of Israel that the Heavenly Father is going to raise up a prophet from within the midst of Israel that will be like me meaning a lot of things that I did this prophet will do similar things as I did now let's jump down to verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Again, Moses reiterates on what he told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, verse 15, that the heavenly father was going to raise up from within the midst of the children of Israel, a prophet like unto me. And this prophet will do similar things that I did to bear witness that the prophecy of the Most High came true. Now, the million dollar question is, who is that prophet? Let's go to the book of Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, verse 44. And let's find out what prophet it was that Moses was speaking to when he was speaking to the children of Israel about the Lord raising up a prophet from within the midst of Israel that would be like unto him. Here is Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So this was Christ speaking to his apostles. And he was telling them that Moses wrote about him, that the prophets wrote about him, and even David in the book of Psalms wrote about him. So it was Christ in which Moses was speaking about when he was speaking to the children of Israel. Now, let's prove it again. Now, there's a reason why I'm going to the uh, to these scriptures. There's a reason why I'm, I'm, you know, taking my time and I'm going through this subject and I'm showing you these scriptures because I'm leading you up to something. Here's the book of Acts, the third chapter, verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Now, when it says he shall send Jesus Christ. That's talking about the most high, which, uh, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. How was Christ before preached unto us, unto the apostles, unto the children of Israel by the prophets that spoke about Christ all throughout the old Testament. This whole Bible is speaking about Christ from Genesis to revelations. There are many different mysteries in the old Testament and throughout this Bible concerning Christ and in another subject I'm going to go into that and I'm going to prove that okay 21 whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began you see 
the, the heavenly father communicated his revelations through the holy prophets and in the prophets they spoke of the coming of the messiah which is who the world calls today jesus christ for moses this is verse 22 for moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you so again the apostles reiterated what moses broke down to the children of israel in the book of deuteronomy the 18th chapter verse 15 and 18 proving that it was christ to uh rebuke those muslims out there who teach false doctrine and teach that it was muhammad in which moses was prophet prophesying about that's a lie it was talking about christ or who the world calls jesus christ okay now the scripture says that the most high was going to raise up from within the midst of israel a prophet like unto me right now that's what moses told the children of israel now christ had a threefold administration to be a prophet to be the messiah and to be the savior of israel so when Christ came upon this earth, he had a threefold administration. Okay. Now, here's the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, because remember Moses said that the heavenly father was going to raise up from within the midst of the children of Israel, a prophet like unto him and, he, and him shall ye hearken, right? Now I'm going to show you some of the things that Moses did. Okay. When he walked among the congregation of the children of Israel, here is uh, Exodus, the 19th chapter verse 1 in the third month when the children of israel were gone forth out of the land of egypt the same day came they into the wilderness of sinai that sinai is mount sinai where the heavenly father revealed his revelations his laws his statutes and commandments unto the 12 tribes of the nation of israel and they were departed from ramp ramp from rep repidem and were come to the desert of sinai and had pitched in the wilderness in their Israel in, in their Israel camp before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of, Is, uh, house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you into my, uh, unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my commandment and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. The children of Israel is above all nations and all people upon the earth. And this is what the heavenly father is telling Moses to tell to the children of Israel, that the heavenly father chose the children of Israel above all nations for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. The children of Israel is not only the chosen people of the Most High, but they are also a kingdom of priests. Meaning all Israelites can teach the word of the Most High. Once the Most High puts the spirit within you to teach his word, all Israel can teach this ministry. And a holy nation. And Israel is a holy nation unto the Heavenly Father. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So the Heavenly Father told Moses to, to proclaim this in Exodus the 19th chapter verse 6 unto the children of Israel 7 and Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him and all the people answered together and said all that the Lord has spoken we will do and Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord so the Lord called the children of Israel his chosen people a kingdom of priests and a holy nation and we know that the scriptures tell us that, that God is not a man in which he shall lie. So when he proclaimed to Moses that the children of Israel was his chosen people, that is to exist forever. Now, let's go back and let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Now, the Lord said that uh, Israel was his chosen people, right? Let's reiterate it on it uh, again. And let's show you where the Most High gave his laws, statutes, and commandments unto the children of Israel and Mount Sinai. Here's Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, verse 1. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, 
that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. Now Horeb is synonymous with Sinai. Go on, on, on uh, the internet and Google Mount Sinai and then Google Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of who who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount of the mist of the fire. So the heavenly Father pleaded with the children of Israel face to face. Now that's going to happen again. This is there's a reason why I, I read these scriptures to to show you that Christ is going to do similar to what Moses did. Remember, Moses said that the Lord was going to raise up a prophet from within the midst of Israel, like unto me, meaning this prophet will do similar things as I did. And he pleaded, Moses uh, was the mediator between the children of Israel and the Heavenly Father, and the Heavenly Father pleaded with the children of Israel in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now, what is one of the major things that Moses is attributed to that the whole entire world knows? How Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then the Most High rained destruction down upon Pharaoh's army and drowned Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. Now everybody throughout the entire world knows that. Right? That was a miracle that the Most High performed in the eyesight of the children of Israel. But Moses was the one who was given the order and given the honor of leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and through the Red Sea. Then the Most High used his power and used Moses as his agent to bring forth this destruction upon the children of Israel. I mean, upon the children of Egypt. Now, Matthew 24 and 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For who, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the angels be gathered together. That's talking about on Christ's second coming. The disaster and the destruction that he is coming to bring upon the armies of this earth. And the Bible says, 28, For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the angels be gathered together. It's going to be a lot of death, as I explained to you. And the video that I did just got finished doing the second coming of Jesus Christ. This video, the kingdom of heaven, is kind of like a follow up to the second coming of Jesus Christ video that I did. Now I'm going to break down to you about the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and I'm going to do another video concerning the Gentiles and their role and their position in the kingdom of heaven because the Gentiles will be there. But what role and what position will the Gentiles play in the kingdom of heaven under the 12 tribes of Israel? That's the next video. Now, the scripture says again, Matthew 24 and 28, for, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the angels, I'm excuse me, there will the eagles be gathered together. A lot of flesh. The eagles are going to eat deliciously in that day from all the dead carcasses and all the dead bodies and all the dead flesh that will be upon the earth in this day. 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. As I showed you in the second coming of Jesus Christ video, the sun shall be darkened from bombs being blown, from missiles being shot, from smoke in the air. The sun shall not give its light and the moon shall not give her. Get the, the, let's read that again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. This is also a twofold prophecy because the sun symbolically represents wisdom and the moon shall not give her light the moon symbolically represents knowledge so wisdom and knowledge shall be diminished in that time men are going to be terrified they're going to be in a total state of perplexity not knowing in which direction to go and what solution to take because it's going to be an all-out catastrophe in this day and even leading up to the second coming of jesus christ so the sun rep represents wisdom and the moon represents knowledge. And it says, And the stars shall fall from heaven. What stars is that talking about? It's not talking about the, the celestial bodies up in the heavenly realm in which the heavenly father created. 
because the scriptures tell you that he created those bodies up in in the, in the heavens the sun the moon and the stars as an ordinance to exist for uh for uh to exist uh forever the sun moon and stars will exist forever and these were the ordinances that he created that will exist forever so it's not actually talking about the stars up in heaven it's talking about human beings what do you call hollywood celebrities stars that's why you had the television show dancing with the stars um you have the hollywood walk of fame to famous actors and act uh famous musicians that um have uh sold millions upon millions of records that uh their movies have grossed millions upon millions of dollars these hollywood celebrities are honored in hollywood and the hollywood uh, walk of fame and what do they do what do they get they get a name with a star next to their name on the hollywood walk of fame so it's talking about hollywood celebrities those are your stars today and the scripture says and the stars shall fall from heaven what heaven the heaven that these hollywood celebrities are in these sports figures these musicians as well as hollywood actors and actresses they are in their heaven now the immaculate and luxurious homes that they live in, the beautiful cars that they drive, the expensive trips and the luxurious trips that they take all over the earth. They are in their heaven now. But eventually in this day, the scriptures say that the stars shall fall from heaven. They're going to fall out of their, their place of luxury in that day. Okay? And the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. The governments and kingdoms are in their power. They're in their reign. They're in their authority. Okay, they are in their heaven, the kingdoms and governments of the earth. So when it says, in the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, that's what it's talking. It's talking about all the kingdoms and governments falling down before the, the uh, feet of Jesus Christ, or who the world calls Jesus Christ. All the kingdoms and governments are going to are coming down, and they're going to be under a total state of submission under Jesus Christ. 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. As I showed you again in the second coming of Jesus Christ video, the people are going to be terrified. Then the Bible says, then shall also the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Let's read that again. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The people are going to be terrified in this day. That's, that's what I tried to show you and tell you in the book of Amos, the fifth chapter, verse 18 woe unto you who desire the day of the Lord for what end is it for you for the day of the Lord is darkness and not light people are going to be terrified on the second coming of Jesus Christ because many people have been looking for a pale Caucasian Jesus Christ to return but when they look up in the heavens and they see a so-called Negro a man of dark skin complexion coming back that's going to totally frighten the earth even more and the governments and the kingdoms of this earth and the people of this earth are going to know that the children of israel are the so-called negroes that was oppressed that was discriminated against and treated very poorly in this society and throughout the entire world you're going to know he's coming back to rescue his people and you're going to know that we are the chosen people of the most high and you've mistreated us all these years Let's read ver uh, verse 30 again. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the earth to another. The children of Israel are scattered and dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth. So Christ is making this proclamation that he is sending his angels back to retrieve the children of Israel from the four corners of the earth. Just as Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt before the Heavenly Father rained his destruction down upon Pharaoh's army, the Heavenly Father is going to commission Christ to send his angels to retrieve the children of Israel from the four corners of the earth. Okay? Now, Let's read 31 again. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of, the, of heaven to the other. Now, who is his elect? Because many people will say, well, the elect is anybody that believes on Christ. Let's see what the Bible says. Let's go precept upon precept. Now, what is a precept? 
A precept is a scripture in the Bible that gives you information and knowledge about another scripture in another part of the Bible. It breaks down scripture to give understanding. Now, let's go to Isaiah 40, 45 and let's read verse 4. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So the scripture tells you that the children of Israel are the heavenly father's chosen elect. And this is the reason why he's going to commission Christ to send the angels to retrieve the children of Israel from the four corners of the earth because we are his chosen elect. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 8. When the angels retrieve us, this is what's going to happen. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 8. For this we say, let, I mean, uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that that we which are alive and remain remain in the flesh those of us that are alive during this time when the angels come back to retrieve us those of us that are alive and remain in the flesh unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep those that are those of uh, our people that died in the service of the Most High we being alive and remain in the flesh will not prevent them from rising in that day for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first the dead in Christ shall rise first whoever died in the service and belief of the most high in Christ they will rise first in the truth of the most high in Christ they will rise first before those of us who are alive and remain in the flesh rise 17 then then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see that? Then we who are alive and remain in this flesh, we will rise also. And we will be with those who have risen before us and, and to meet the Lord in the air. Now there are many different Israelite groups that don't believe in this. They don't believe that there's going to be a caught up, you know, a snatching away. A gathering away in the air but that's what happened to Enoch when you go back and read in the book of Genesis Enoch was translated or he was taken off this earth the prophet Elijah was taken off this earth and taken up into the heavens this is what's gonna happen to us so many of these other Israelite groups don't believe that but that's what's gonna happen on the second coming of Jesus Christ now the scripture says First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the dead and, uh, and, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, let's find out what the voice of the archangel is. Let's go to the book of Revelations, precept upon precept. Let's go to the book of Revelations, the 11th chapter. And we're going to read verse 12. Revelations 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up in heaven. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. The world is going to witness this. This miraculous act of the children of Israel being lifted from off this earth to rise and to meet the Lord in the air. That's something in, in most people's minds that they can't fathom. But that's going to happen. And their enemies beheld them. All of those who are against the children of Israel will bear witness to this. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you that what happens after we are risen up with Christ. What happens after? Let's go to the book of uh, Ezekiel. If you have your scriptures, I want you to follow along with me. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. We're going to read Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, verse 32. And, and that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. No more will the children of Israel worship other gods. You're going to know who truly your God is, who your power is. You're going to know truly who the Most High is, and you're going to know who truly jesus christ is you're going to know his true name his name will be revealed to us and we're going to know that name 
No more will you hear Yahawashai. No more will you hear Yeshua, Yahoshua, Yeshia, Jesus Christ. You're going to know his true name in that day. And we will no longer serve wood and stone, false gods, idol gods. Okay? As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. Christ is going to rule over the children of Israel for his 1,000 year millennial reign. But this right here is talking about the wilderness where he's going to lead the children of Israel in f uh, first for this period of preparation just as Moses led the children of Israel into the wilderness before entering into the land of Canaan driving those Canaan out, Canaanites out and then taking that land for the children of Israel which the heavenly father swore unto Abraham Isaac and Jacob that that land of Canaan will be the possession of the children of Israel so we are going to be led into the wilderness for a period of preparation before entering into the land of Israel to start his 1,000 year millennial reign. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm will I, with, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. You see that? With fury poured out, he's going to gather us from all the nations in which we've been scattered amongst the children of Israel has been scattered among all nations and there are many prophecies in the Bible just read the book of Deuteronomy the 28th chapter the whole chapter and it'll show you how the children of Israel was dispersed and scattered throughout all nations okay 35 and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people see that I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face just as he did in Deuteronomy the fifth chapter verse 1 all the way down to verse 4 he pleaded with the children of Israel. Moses uh, got the commandments from the Heavenly Father for the Israelites to obey the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. And he pleaded with Israel within the midst of Moses and in the midst of him. And Mount Sinai is where he pleaded with the children of Israel. This is what Christ is going to do. He's going to plead with the children of Israel, okay, in the wilderness. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says the Lord God. You see that? So Christ is going to do similar to the things that Moses did. That's why I showed you that in the beginning of the subject. And I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of, of the covenant. And I will purge and I will purge out from among you the rebels. Just as in the times of Moses, there were rebels who rose up against Moses. Although they saw the glorious and wonderful and miraculous work that Moses did by the hand of the Most High, there were still Israelites that rebelled against Moses in the wilderness. So it will be in the time of Christ. There are going to be rebels that's going to rise up against Christ. Now let me give you some examples of these rebels that's going to rise up against Christ. You have these different Hebrew Israelite groups today that wear that satanic shield of David. And I've warned these brothers about wearing that shield, but they still wear it. Go and watch my video, A Message to the ISUPK. And I broke down about that so-called Star David, but you have a lot of these Israelite groups still wearing it. Those are the rebels. Then you have um, these brothers also teaching that false 12 tribe breakdown. That's a rebel doctrine. Any man who does not believe in the virgin birth of Christ is a, is a rebel, antichrist. That's an antichrist doctrine to teach that Joseph was the physical or biological father of Christ. When the scripture says that a virgin shall conceive. But they teach that Joseph was the actual physical biological father of Christ. That's a rebel antichrist doctrine. And many other things that these other Israelite groups teach. They don't believe in the water baptism. That's an antichrist doctrine. Those are the rebels that will be purged out. And many other rebellious Israelites out there. Those who know the Israelites and those that don't, they're going to be purged out. Those are the rebels that will be purged out in that day. And it says, uh, Ezekiel 20 and 38, And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country. What country? Not countries. Country. In this particular scripture, it's talking about this modern day Egypt. Just as Moses led the children of Israel out of the actual ancient land of Egypt, Christ is going to lead the children of Israel out of this modern day Egypt. And all, all over the earth, Israel is going to be gathered unto him. But this 
modern day Egypt, America. Why? Because the children of Israel was captive here for over 400 years, just as the children of Israel was captive in ancient Egypt for 400 years, over 400 years. Okay? Where they sojourn, where we sojourn in this modern day Egypt. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Those rebels are going to be purged out in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. That's where Christ is going to be pleading with the children of Israel. Okay, before leading Israel into the land of, of, of Israel. Then his 1,000 year millennial reign begins when the children of Israel are led into the land of Israel. Is when his 1,000 year millennial reign begins. Those rebels will not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And, and then we will know truly he is the Lord. And we're going to know his true biblical name. I mean his true name that the Heavenly Father has given him. We're going to know the Heavenly Father's name. We're going to know all the things that we quest and desire to know. We're going to, those answers are going to be uh, answered to us. And we're going to know everything we need to know. Because Christ is going to be building us up and preparing us in the flesh. Those that rise, they're going to take back on their flesh. And those of us that are alive and remain in the flesh, we will stay in the flesh for his 1,000 year millennial reign. Okay? Because the Bible says that flesh and blood shall not enter into the kingdom of the Most High. The Most High is a spirit. So flesh and blood cannot enter into his kingdom. So what, what does that mean? That means that we're going to be in the flesh. Just as those that rise, they're going to take back on their fleshly bodies. And for that 1,000 year millennial reign of Christ, we are going to be in the flesh. Think about it. After Christ resurrected, after his, uh, his crucifixion, he rose on the third day. When he appeared to his apostles and disciples, right? Was he in the spirit or was he in the flesh? He was in the flesh and he told his disciples to handle me and touch me for a spirit is not of flesh and bone. Also, when you read in the book of Acts, the, fir the first chapter, as he spent those 40 days with his apostles and then he ascended back up to the throne of the heavenly father, the angels stood by and, and spoke to these men. And said, ye men of Galilee, why do you stand here gazing up? This same Jesus shall return in the same like manner. Just as you've seen him go away, is the same way he's going to return in the flesh. Okay? So we're going to be in the flesh for a thousand years. But why is the Lord gathering the children of Israel out of all the nations in which he scattered us? Because there's something that's going to occur. So he has to retrieve us before this destruction happens. Here's Revelations, the third chapter. We're going to read verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see that? He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole earth. He's going to rescue, safeguard, and protect the children of Israel from the calamities that will happen upon the earth. But there are going to be rebels that's going to rebel against Christ just as Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Saw the safety of Israel no, no, no longer being in captivity, yet they still rebelled against Moses. And therefore they were purged out and they were not allowed to enter into the land of Israel. So it shall be in that day. Israelites are going to, they're going to be some that, that the two thirds of Israel is going to rebel. That's Zechariah, the 13th chapter, verse 8 and 9. One third from the midst of the population of, of the Lord's people will get the truth, while two thirds will not. They're going to be purged out and destroyed, and they shall not enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Okay? Now, Revelation, the third chapter, verse 10 again. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see that? Wicked Israelites are going to be purged out, but those who have kept the patience and the faith of the Most High, He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation and safeguard and protect us. Okay? Now, from there, let's get on Revelations, the 20th chapter, and let's get into the 1,000-year millennial reign of Christ. There are going to be two kingdoms. Christ's kingdom is to reign for a thousand years. Then after a thousand years, the Father's kingdom comes. Okay, I'm going to show that to you. Here's Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an, an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit 
and a great chain in his hand. Now, this is a vision that John the Revelator saw about the, the end time. The end times that John the Revelator was allowed to see these apocalyptic visions on, on the Isles of Patmos when he was imprisoned. And Christ began to show him visions of the end time and the kingdom of heaven. Now, what he is seeing is Satan being bound up. Okay, here's Revelation 20 and 1 again. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Satan will have no power to execute his wickedness and his deception on this earth for a thousand years. He will be bound up and have no power to influence the nations at all. There will be no wickedness that will manifest itself in Christ's kingdom for a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. See, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. After a thousand years, Satan will be loosed from his throne. I mean, loosed from his uh, bonds to go abroad, abroad the breath of the earth and deceive the nations one last time. Okay. Four. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. When it says, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them. Let's find out who those thrones were. Okay. I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. Let's find out who the, who was, who's going to be sitting upon those thrones. Let's get the book of Matthew. If you have your scriptures, follow along with me. Here's Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 27. Then P answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have thereof? Therefore, and Jesus answered them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the, on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The disciples are going to be back in Christ's kingdom in the flesh for 1,000 years judging over the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. That is their reward for the glorious work that they did and dying for the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will be back again in Christ's kingdom to sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. From there, let's get the book of uh, Revelations. Let's get Revelations, the fourth chapter. Let's read verse one. This is another apocalyptic vision that John the Revelator saw. Revelation 4 and 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter, which things will happen hereafter. Meaning not in John the Revelator's time, but it will happen uh, in the future. Okay, which... Is our present earth age today it didn't exist in John the Revelator's time so in a vision Christ told John to come up hither and he was in the spirit and he saw apocalyptic visions which was to happen in the future verse 2 and immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on that throne that's Christ and he that sat sat was to look upon like a jasper and, and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty uh, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold you see that the 24 elders now many people truly don't know who the 24 elders are the 24 elders are those that are going to be sitting in Christ's kingdom. 12 disciples, the 12 sons of Jacob. 24, 12 and 12 is 24. The 12 sons of Jacob and the 12 disciples make up 24. Those are the 24 elders that will be sitting upon the throne in the kingdom. Okay, now let's get Revelation of 14 chapter and show you something else. And I looked, and, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sinai, 
and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand having the, his father's name written in their forehead then we're going to know truly what the heavenly father's name is and it's going to be when it says written upon our forehead meaning it's going to be embedded in our minds to know what the father's name is so there will be no more Yahweh, ahaya jah uh yah um uh, 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 Jehovah, as I said, God, we will truly know his name in that day, his true name. We're going to know his name because we're going to have the name of the father in our forehead, that 144,000. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as a, the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne. And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whither, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of God. You see that? That's why I tried to warn the great millstone in the video that I did a message to the great millstone about using profanity when teaching the words of the Most High. These 144,000 had no guile in their mouth that they would stand fault before the Most High. I tried to warn these guys. They are rebels also. And 144,000 men are virgins, meaning they did not sin for women, but they were pure in heart and pure in spirit. And they were not defiled with women. Does that mean that they weren't dealing with women? No, it just simply means that they were pure in heart and pure in spirit and they did not allow women to deceive them and to make them sin against the Most High. Okay? Now, from there, let's go to Isaiah. Now, what this is showing you is a governmental structure being set up under Jesus Christ. Okay? His, the 24 elders, you know, his 12 disciples, 12 sons of Jacob. Make up the uh, the twenty four elders and his in his hundred and forty four thousand. That's a governmental body. Now let's show you that it was prophesied in the scriptures that a government would be upon Christ's shoulders, and that he would rule in his kingdom under a governmental structure. Isaiah in the ninth chapter verse six: For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government and and, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Because Christ is God the Son, okay? The everlasting Father. He is our Father. He is just like our, all, all of our forefathers. Abraham was our forefather. Isaac was our forefather. Jacob was our forefather. He is our forefather, an everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. To establish it with judgment and with justice for henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see that? And the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it lightened upon Israel. He sent a word into Israel and it lightened upon Israel. That's the Holy Spirit. That lightened upon the minds and spirit of those that the Heavenly Father chose to wake up to this divine knowledge. Not everybody has this. Not everybody can stomach this or spiritually ingest this. Okay? Now, the scriptures tell us that Christ will be sitting upon David's throne, meaning when King David ruled uh, in the flesh, when he actually walked the earth and ruled as king of Israel, he ruled over all nations and all nations were tributaries onto King David. That's what Christ is going to do in his 1000 year millennial reign. Here's the book of um, Psalms 132 and 11 to show you the prophecy of Christ coming and sitting upon the throne of David. Psalms 132 and 11, the Lord has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne, meaning the heavenly father is going to raise up a king from, the, from within the seed of David that shall sit upon his throne. Now let's get the prophecy uh, on that again. Let's reiterate it on, it on it again. Let's get the book of Luke, the first chapter, verse 30, to prove it again, that Christ will be sitting upon the throne of David. Here's Luke 1 and 30. And the angel said unto Mary, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. His true name will be revealed to us in the kingdom. Okay. He shall be great and he shall 
he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom there shall be no end again the angel tells Mary that Christ shall be sitting upon the throne of David ruling over the 12 tribes of Israel and his kingdom shall be no end meaning after the thousand year millennial reign he's going to merge his kingdom in with the father and live forever and ever and ever and those of us who are blessed to make it into his kingdom we will reign with Christ and the most high forever and ever and ever okay now let's prove it one more time that Christ is of the seed of David and it was prophesied that he would reign over Israel. Let's go to the book of Acts to all the naysayers out there that Christ is the savior of Israel. Here's Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. So I don't follow man-made philosophy and man-made doctrine. I follow the scriptures. We obey the heavenly father rather than men. The, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree meaning the cross the wood from a tree they used to make the cross him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin and we are his witnesses of these things and so it is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him so you see that Christ was a prince and a savior unto Israel that's why the Heavenly Father is sending him back to redeem the 12 tribes of Israel. Now listen, this is Acts 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, that's talking about King Saul, then he raised up them, David, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, of David's seed, God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. There you go. There you go. Christ is the root and the offspring of David. And he rose up from the loins of David, Christ, who is a savior unto Israel. To anybody else out there who says that Christ is not the savior of Israel, you're going against the scriptures. Now, let's get Revelation, the 22nd chapter, verse 16. Let's get it out of Christ's own mouth. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches that I, that I that, that I am the root and offspring of David in the bright and morning star. So here Christ tells you out of his own mouth that he is the root and offspring of King David from the lineage of Judah, of the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel. OK, now let's go back to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. That's the 24 elders, you know, those 12 disciples, 12 sons of Jacob, the 144,000. That is the governmental structure, the governmental body that will be sitting under Christ in his 1,000-year millennial reign. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and, and, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads in their right hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years that's talking about the dead in Christ some of us maybe in within this earth age might suffer persecution for the testimony of the word of God and Jesus Christ but they live again in a thousand year millennial reign now let's show you that it was prophesied that some Israelites may suffer that persecution Here's Revelation 2, verse 10. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Those ten days breaks down to ten years. Concentration camps, detention centers, uh, internment centers, internment camps. Many will be persecuted for Christ's name, just as Israel was persecuted in the past for Christ's name. In this modern day society, this Bible is going to be found illegal to have in your possession. So many will be persecuted and even put to death for believing on Christ, teaching on Christ and holding this Bible in your hand. This Bible will be outlawed and it will be a crime to possess it. So many will perish, not all of us, but some will die. And ye shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee the crown of life. See that? That some will face persecution. Not all of us, but some. Now, let's prove it again. This is John the Revelator seeing another apocalyptic vision. Here's Revelation 6, verse 9. 
And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the vo the souls of them that were slain for the te for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. This word is very offensive to liars out there and in Satan's kingdom where Satan is ruling on this present earth today. His his people, those that are following him are going to be persecuting the saints of Christ. Who are the saints? The children of Israel. Read Psalms 148, 13 and 14. Okay. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on, on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled you see that some of our fellow brethren and fellow servants will face that persecution of death for the testimony of jesus christ that's the prophecy we pray it's not any of us but if so we know that our reward lies in the kingdom with the most high in christ revelation 20 verse 5 but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. See, the rest of the dead live not until the thousand years were finished. In the flesh, we're going to be in Christ's kingdom for a thousand years. Listen, those rebels that are going to be purged out in the wilderness, they stay dead until after the 1,000 year millennial reign. When we enter into the kingdom and the land of Israel, which is the kingdom, then his thousand year millennial reign begins. All the wicked that Christ destroyed on his second coming in the battle of Armageddon, they die. Innumerable amounts of people all over the earth die. But mainly in the valley, in the valley of Jehoshaphat where the battle of Armageddon is going to actually take place and occur. But millions upon millions will die all over the earth. There's going to be natural disaster everywhere. Remember, remember if you have any doubts, go back and listen to my video again, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he told you that one stone shall not be upon another that shall not be thrown down. All out destruction. So the dead, the wicked, shall not live until after a thousand years. But they stand judgment. And then they're cast into the eternal hell's fire forever. But the thousand years that the righteous are in, in Christ's kingdom are safeguarded and protected for all eternity. But the rest of the dead live not until after the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. You see that they shall reign with him a thousand years. OK, now let's read verse seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. After the thousand years, Satan will be loose from his prison, from his bounds to go abroad, abroad the breath of the earth one last time. See, God gave Christ the honor of destroying all kingdoms and governments to set up his thousand year millennial reign. That's the love that the father had for his son. But in the latter end, the father says, no, the last battle is mine. There's even a gospel song that says the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. In this last battle, the battle is the Heavenly Father's. He comes and destroys the kingdoms and governments that raise up upon the earth again. Okay, but let's show you. After Christ takes down the kingdoms. Show you that that was prophesied in the book of Daniel. Daniel 7 verse 13 and I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion glory and a kingdom that all nations all people nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed you see that. So John the Revelator saw a vision of Christ taking down all the kingdoms and governments of the earth. And his dominion shall be an everlasting dominion and a kingdom that is an everlasting kingdom. Okay. Revelation 20 and 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his, his prisons. And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog is Russia. And before this time. 
on the Battle of Armageddon, when Christ comes back to fight the armies, it's Russia that's going to lead this battle into the land of uh, Israel to fight against the, the, the beast, the one world global dictator, the European Union, the 10 nation confederacy. Russia and its allies will come into the land of Israel because that's where the beast is going to set up his rulership at. As the Bible says, he, sit, he, he will sit in the temple showing that himself to be God. In the book, let me show you that. This He's going to set up his kingdom, his rulership in the land of Israel, and he will deceive the nations to believe that he is God. Let me see if I can find that. Here is 2 Thess Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 3. Listen, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first, a falling away of faith. The second coming of Jesus Christ shall not come except there be a falling away of faith. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin is the Antichrist, this one world global dictator that's coming out of the European Union. Some believe it's the Pope. When you read the scriptures, it talks about the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And these unclean spirits as frogs came out of the dragon's mouth. The beast's mouth and the false prophet. The false prophet is the Pope. The beast is the Antichrist, the one world global dictator. And the dragon is Satan. And it says, uh, Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself all above all that is called God. Or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God that's what he's going to do he's going to deceive the whole entire world to make them believe he is Christ and he's going to set up his kingdom his throne his temple in the land of Israel they're going to destroy that Mount uh, that um, that that the mosque of Omar the, the dome of the rock that's upon Mount Sinai right now okay that holy so-called Islamic shrine, that temple that's over there in uh, uh, in Mount Zion right now, they're going to destroy that, right? And that's when they're going to build up a temple for him so that he may sit in his temple proclaiming himself to be God. Russia has always been a communist nation, uh, uh, uh anti-Christ nation that don't believe in the Heavenly Father and don't believe in this Bible. They are atheists. They're going to lead a campaign against this Antichrist and they're going to have an innumerable army that's going to come with Russia into the land of Israel to fight this Antichrist. And his army, the Ten Nation Confederacy, the European Union, are going to engage in battle. That's when Christ is going to join the battle to make that make sense to you. Now, after that happens, Christ sets up his millennial reign. After the millennial reign is over, then God puts the spirit on Satan to go abroad the breath of the earth. After the thousand years is up, then this same nation, Russia, because all the nations of the earth are still going to be on earth. Okay, they're going to be in a period of servitude under the 12 tribes of Israel and Christ for a thousand years. But after the thousand years... Satan will have no power to do no wickedness for a thousand years. But after the thousand years, that's when God will lose Satan. He will lose him to go and deceive the nations. And Russia is going to be that evil army that's going to lead a campaign against the children of Israel in the kingdom one last time. Let's read verse 8, Revelation 2 and 8. And he and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of, of whom is as the sand of the sea, an innumerable army. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, is which is Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured the armies and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. After the, uh, during, Before the millennial reign. Remember, the Battle of Armageddon, Russia leads a campaign with the Arab Federation and allies of Russia into the land of Israel to fight against the beast, the European Union, the Ten Nation Confederacy, and his armies, along with the Pope, who's over the Vatican. Okay? Their army fights against Russia and their confederate, okay, including, including the Arabs. Okay, you read Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, that breaks that down. Then after that, the beast... The false prophet are tossed into the hell's fire. They die, meaning their spirits go right to the fire, right to the hell's fire. And they stay there until after the thousand year millennial reign. 
That's why it said, verse 10, and the devil that deceiveth them were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They are already there awaiting those who came up against the children of Israel again. So they're already going to be in the hell's fire and destruction. Then God casts all the armies into the hell's fire where the beast and the false prophet are. And it says, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and let's show you about the books that are going to be open when christ after his thousand year millennial reign sits on the throne of judgment to judge all nations precept upon precept let's give you understanding of what the books are at least let me show you one book because we know the book of life is the names of those that are are um promised to enter into the father's kingdom after the thousand year millennial reign the book of life is a book that records all the names but let me show you another book let's go to the book of malachi the third chapter verse 16 malachi 3 and 16 okay then now, this is Malachi 3 and 15, and now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. They're going to be delivered up in that day, those that tempt the Heavenly Father. They're going to be punished. 16. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord in that thought upon his name. So the book of remembrance is one of the books you're going to be judged as out of that records your daily deeds and how you thought upon the words of the Most High, how you thought upon the Heavenly Father in Jesus Christ and the work that you did in the name of the Most High in Christ. Let's prove that, that this is what the book of remembrance is. Let's show you what the book of remembrance is. It is a book that records your daily deeds and how you thought upon the name of the Most High and the work that you've done in the name of the Most High. Let's prove that. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. You see that? The Heavenly Father is not unrighteous to forget your labor of work in which you have shown toward his name and that ye have ministered unto his saints. The book of remembrance is how he will not forget it. Your daily deeds are being recorded in the book of remembrance and how you thought upon the Heavenly Father's name and the work that you have done to serve the Most High and to teach his people. This is why I make all my videos, not for my glorification or not for my benefit and not for my profit. I want to endure the Father's kingdom so I do his work. But I teach because the Father has put it upon my heart to teach, and I pray that he forget not my labor of love, in which the work I have shown toward his name, and ministering the word of the Lord unto you. That's why I do this work, with no compensation. I don't need any payment from you. I don't need your money. I don't need your or glory, your honor. I need that from the Heavenly Father. That's where my glory will, will, will come from. Not from man. Now, here's Revelation, the 20th chapter. Oh, and let me show you about the, the judgment. Let's get the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Let's get Matthew 25 and 31. Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, all nations, the dead, the great, the small, those who had power on this earth, those who had influence on this earth, those who had wealth and riches, fame, prosperity, and economic financial stability. They will all be before Christ in the day of judgment. That's the dead who did not live until after the thousand years. Okay? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. The righteous shall be on this side, and the wicked shall be on that side. Sheeps dividing the goats. Who are the sheep of Christ? Read Matthew the 15th chapter verse 24. Christ said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Israel is the sheep and the goats represent the other nations and even wicked Israelites. Okay. 
and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, the kingdom of the father. So it's going to be two kingdoms. Christ said, Come ye, inherit the kingdom of my father. Read it again. Matthew 24 and 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Inherit now the father's kingdom. After you have proven yourself worthy in his thousand year millennial reign, now he says to the sheep on his right hand, you have done wonderful. You have done a beautiful job and an obedient job. Now come inherit the father's kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. Meaning the heavenly father already knew who was going to be in his kingdom and who wasn't going to be in his kingdom. Just as he told Jeremiah the prophet, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee and sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So the heavenly father already knew Jeremiah was going to be a righteous prophet unto him even before his mother and father came together, consummated, and his mother brought forth Jeremiah in the womb. The heavenly father already knew Jeremiah was going to be a prophet unto him and a sanctified, holy, set apart prophet from the nations to proclaim prophecies unto the nations and to teach the word of God unto the children of Israel. The Heavenly Father already knew Jeremiah was going to be a righteous man unto him. So that's why Christ said, 34, then shall the king say unto him, then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. The righteous was already preordained to be in the father's kingdom. Let's read verse 41 to the wicked. Then shall he say also unto them on his left hand, depart from, depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see that? Pre prepare death unto the wicked. Cursed are the wicked on his left hand. Why was he going to curse the wicked? 42, for I, was, I, for I was hungered and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger and ye took me not in. Naked and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or at thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye have, insomuch as ye did it not unto one of these least of these, ye did it not, not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. That represents a lot of these Israelite brothers who refuse to teach the black woman. We not teaching the black woman. We we not dealing with you black women. You black women are cursed. We not dealing with you black women. See that? That's how they ministered not unto Christ's people. Our sisters were were thirsty and you gave them no drink. They were hungry and you gave them no meat. They were naked and you clothed them not. They were spiritually in prison in the prison of their minds, but you freed them not and ministered not unto them. Many of our people you ministered not unto. You showed bitterness and hatred and contempt in your heart for your own brothers and sisters. That's why he's going to tell you, cast the, uh, 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 you shall be cast into everlasting punishment. So you teach all your brothers and sisters, not just the men. You teach your sisters too. How are they going to know unless you teach them? All right. Revelation, the 20th chapter, verse 11. And I saw, actually, let's read verse 12. We already, let's read 11. And I saw a great white throne. The great white throne represents justice. It represents equality, honor. Just like you watch Hollywood movies and you see this cowboy on a white horse and he's riding away into the sunset. That represents justice. That's what the white throne represents. And it also represents righteousness. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. For whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, those who had economic, political, and power, and might on this earth, uh, all the way down to the poor, but still was wicked before the Most High. I saw the, the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. There's going to be three books, the Bible, the, 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 the uh, Book of Remembrance, and the, and the Book of Life. Which in another book was opened, which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up 
the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to his works. And death and hell, see, we all have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ to answer for the things done in our body, whether good or bad. That's what the book of Corinthians tells us. First Corinthians says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to answer for the things done in our body, whether good or bad. This is what happens on the judgment. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See that? Death and hell, there will be no more death. After the thousand year millennial reign and after the judgment, there will be no more death and there will be no more hell, but pure righteousness on this earth. Even in Christ's 1000 year millennial reign, it's going to be total peace. That's why he's called the Prince of Peace. And the world is going to be a total utopia after the th during the thousand years. After the thousand years, Satan uh, deceives the nations to come against Israel one last time. The Heavenly Father tells Christ, wait, this battle is mine. He destroys all the armies. And then after that, that's when judgment day occurs. Then the dead, the wicked, uh, are back in Christ's kingdom, I mean, uh, before the throne of Christ to stand judgment and the righteous stand judgment. Christ tells the righteous, come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. But the wicked, which representing the goats, are cursed into everlasting destruction. Once he destroys death and hell, that's it. Those people are tormented and they're destroyed forever. No repentance unto them. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, what happens then after the destruction? Before you get Revelation, the 21, the 21st chapter, this happens. This happens first. Let's get 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Uh, let's start at verse... 40 first first corinthians the 15th chapter verse 40 there are also celestial bodies and bodies celestial heavenly bodies spiritual bodies i mean he heavenly and spiritual bodies and physical bodies celestial bodies represent the spiritual angelic bodies that god that jesus christ and the angels have in the kingdom of heaven celestial bodies represent these solids these physicals that we possess here on earth and it says there are also celestial bodies and, and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Let's jump over to verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. These solids, these physicals cannot enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father. Why? Because the heavenly father is spirit. And in the flesh, the flesh cannot, the flesh is, is subject to temptation. But in the spirit, the spirit is righteous. So flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of the most high. So what happens before uh, Revelation, the 21st chapter and a, and, a, and a miraculous act happens in Revelation, the 21st chapter uh, uh, before Revelation, the 21st chapter. This is first Corinthians, the 50, uh, the 15th chapter, verse, verse 50. This is what happens. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter, uh, inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doeth corruption and inherit corruption and corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep because the righteous have given permission to enter into God's kingdom. When it says we shall not all sleep, that's the dead in Christ who was judged uh, because of their wickedness. They're cast into the everlasting flame. We live on forever. So we shall not all sleep. We will live an eternal life with God the Father and Jesus Christ and God the Father's kingdom forever and ever so we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a twink in, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the last trump is representing god the father destroying all the nations and then we stand in christ in heavenly father's kingdom that's when our bodies are going to be changed at the last trump for the for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be raised. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. Remember what I showed you in First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse fifteen and sixteen. Uh, in fifteen down to eighteen, in First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, fifth the fifteenth verse to the eighteenth verse. Those dead in Christ, they rise first, and we that are alive and remain in the flesh, we rise first. I mean, we rise after them. We go into the wilderness to be prepared. Now remember how Moses was to keep the children of Israel and to teach the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 days. But because Israel rebelled against the Most High, he allowed that 40 days to turn into 40 years to purge out all the wicked that, that came out of Egypt.
that wicked generation that came out of Egypt. So it wound up being 40 years. And then J uh, Joshua and, K and Caleb led the children of Israel into the land of Israel. He led the youth, the children, the kids, the youth, the young men and women into the land of Israel. So the dead in Christ rose first and they took on their actual bodies. So the thousand years we will all be in the flesh. See? But after the thousand years, we take on these spiritual bodies. And it says, for this, uh, yeah, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put, put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death and Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You see that? Now we just read that in the book of Revelations. Let's read that part again. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You see that? Where is thy victory, death? And, and where is thy sting, O death? Let's go back to Revelations, the 20th chapter. Verse 14. And death and hell were cast onto the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's how death and hell was swallowed up. Now, I'm going to give you another preset. As our bodies are changed, let me show you. Here is, let's go back to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 24. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end of his millennial reign. When he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is expected, which put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subjected unto him that put all things under him, that God may be in all. After Christ's thousand years, he has put all the kingdoms and governments under his subjection. Then he himself must go under subjection under the kingdom of the most high under God. So I told you it's going to be two kingdoms under the father. Christ's thousand year reign. And then the father, then he himself will go under subjection under the father. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man shall enter into the father, but by me, you must go through his thousand year millennial reign first to enter into the father's kingdom. So it's two kingdoms. Now, with that understanding, let's go and get the book of Philippians. It got a few more scriptures and I'll shut it down. Let's go to the book of Philippians. I hope a lot of you understand this. Everything that I showed you, and I hope many of you stay with me, stayed with me to uh, listen to this whole video. Here is Philippians, the third chapter. We're going to read verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. See, our conversation is in heaven. When you are sitting back with your wife and the wife is talking with her husband about the heavenly father, that conversation rests upon the ears of the heavenly father so your conversation is in heaven i'm conversating with all you brothers and sisters and all you people out there in a listening audience so our conversation my words are in heaven your conversation when you conversate with another brother and sister in faith your conversation is in heaven that's why i showed you uh malachi the third chapter verse 16 that the father heard everything you said in a book of remembrance was written to record your conversation and your daily deeds. For our conversation is in heaven. For whence also we look for the, sa the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even su to subdue all things unto himself. So our bodies are going to be changed as his bodies are changed. Then we enter into the Father's kingdom. We take on those celestial bodies. Spiritual bodies. Here's Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven 
a new earth and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I saw and I saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and a and I heard a great voice out of the tap and out of the out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he the heavenly father he shall he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow neither crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away all the, the the things that we have endured in our current life in our current earth age those of us who are disabled those of us who are sick those of us who go through different affirmities that will be all wiped away he will wipe all tears from our eyes all sorrows from our hearts all pain from our flesh and it says, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, write these things which are faithful and true, which are true and faithful. Now, let's jump down to verse eight, verse eight. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Anybody who lies on the Most High, they're not going to enter into the Heavenly Father's kingdom. After the judgment of the thousand years, that's the second death. You go into the hell's fire. Meaning those wicked, their spirits will be back again to stand judgment. Those who are in a spiritual resting place, um, as, as I showed you uh, in the video, a message to the gathering of Christ Church. I'm going to go into do a, I'm going to go and do another video about what happens when you die. You are placed in a spiritual resting place, sort of like jail, like the county jail. And you sit in the county jail until you are appointed court date. When the righteous die, they go to a spiritual resting place called paradise for the righteous. The wicked go in a holding place also, and they stay there to the appointed time of judgment, which is after the thousand year millennial reign. In that place of where the wicked are, they mourn continually because they know there is no repentance for them. And they know that death and destruction is their fate. They come back to stand before Christ. Christ condemns them, punishes them, and sends them back to destruction. That's the second death. So who will be in that second death? The fearful, those who are afraid to teach the Lord's words, who are afraid to stand up and teach his word fear, for fear of persecution. And for fear how the fam your family may look at you, how the world may look at you, who are afraid to teach the Lord's words. So the fearful will not be in God's kingdom. Unbelieving, all those unbelievers, they will not be in the Lord's kingdom. Those who do not believe on this Bible and believe that Jesus Christ is King, Lord, and Savior. Because he said, he that believeth on me is not condemned, but shall endure everlasting life. The unbelieving do not believe on Christ, dying on the cross, resurrecting as the Messiah and the Savior of Israel. They do not believe that. So they will not be in the kingdom of the Most High. And the abominable, homosexuals and lesbians, lewd lascivious acts, evil wickedness, bestiality, all, form, all forms of lewd sexual immorality, those are the, immor uh, the, the, the abominable. Homosexuals, effeminates, lesbians, you will not be in the Father's kingdom, at least you repent. And murderers, thugs, gangsters, extortioners, murderers, killers, uh, hoodlums, um, gangbangers, those are the murderers. They're not going to be in the Lord's kingdom. Drug dealers. Okay. Whoremongers. Pimps. Prostitutes. Promiscuous women. Promiscuous men. Promiscuous sex. That we see on television every day. Pornographic material. Those are whoremongers. They will not be in the Father's kingdom. Sorcerers. Witchcraft and sorcery. Black magic. Dark arts of the occult. False philosophies. False religion. They are sorcerers. They shall not be in the Father's kingdom. And idolaters, false religion, Islam, Christianity to those that worship false ideologies and philosophies within Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, Rastafarianism, Afrocentricity, Egyptology, Alchemy, Buddhism, as I said, Zoroaspianism, um, various, various philosophies, a new age doctrine, a new age philosophies, Satanists. Secret societies within their doctrine is idolatry. 
they will not be in the Father's kingdom. And all liars and all who lie shall not be in the Father's kingdom, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now with that, I want to say peace on to the nation of Israel, peace on to everybody who watched this video. I hope you got something out of this. And um, yes, brother, uh, I got around to answering your question because this video was directed to you. And um, I'm going to do a video now about in the thousand year reign, what happens to the Gentiles? Because many Gentiles, many people who are not Israel want to know, well, we believe on Christ. Can we get into the kingdom? Yes. You're going to be in the kingdom too. To those Gentiles who are believers on Christ and believe in the truth of what I'm bringing out, you will be in the kingdom too. In the thousand year millennial reign but you will be under a period of subjection under the 12 tribes of israel israel will be ruling over all nations but you will be in the kingdom too let me give you one scripture to show you that revelation 21 and 24 and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it you see that and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So the Gentiles will be there, but they will be under a period of servitude under Israel. Okay? So there, the scriptures tell you that there shall not be an end of all the people. Now the wicked of Esau and his governments and his kingdoms, they're all coming down. But all the kingdoms and the governments are coming down. So I want to say peace to all nations. I want to say peace to the nation of Israel, to everyone who watched this video. And I hope and I pray that you got something out of the study. I, heard, I hope you learned everything you need to know but i'm going to show you more because i'm going to go into the scriptures and i'm going to deal with the gentiles so this is going to be like a three-part series also and the last um subject i'm going to do dealing with this subject is the gentiles in the kingdom of heaven so to the gentiles that are believers on christ you will be there because the scripture says there shall not be an end of all the people you will be there but you're going to be under israel's subjection so with that i want to say peace to everybody who watched this video and um, stay tuned to the next video.